So a while back, I did a tutorial on exporting a 3D tracked camera from Blender to Unreal Engine over USD. I was getting a lot of questions about the workflow and because some things have changed since then, I wanted to do an updated tutorial to show you how you can achieve a shot like this. If you're looking for the most streamlined workflow to get this done, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is prepare the footage. That's right, file management, baby. You're gonna want individual folders containing individual image sequences of this clip. One is going to be a folder for the PNG sequences of your footage with the green screen visible. And that's for the tracking process in Blender. Then I take that same clip, I'm gonna key out the background and apply a garbage mat to get rid of all the other stuff. We, we don't need that. Then I like to throw a solid green background behind it because I'm gonna utilize the MF keyer material function in Unreal. This gets exported as a separate folder for use as a front plate in Unreal. Now we wanna load our PNG sequence into Blender. Set your frame rate, set scene frames, and hit prefetch. Now our footage and the timeline are the same length and frames and our footage is cached. Now we're off to the races with our track. I'm just dropping a whole bunch of trackers all over the place using Control T and Control Shift T to track back and forth from the center of the shot. This is known as a supervised track as opposed to letting Blender automatically select the points of interest to track and doing them all at once. Personally, I find this to be a little more effective. When a tracking marker goes behind me, I follow it out the other side. Once you've added maybe like 10 to 20 tracking markers, go ahead and update your sensor to match your camera. In this case, I was using an FX3 like everyone else. You can also use the focal length you were using, 14 millimeter in this case. Then I set the distortion model to brown. Let Blender choose the keyframes to initialize the solve from and allow it to refine the focal length and tangential distortion. Our solve error is a little higher than I'd like it to be, so we're gonna take a look at our graph and just delete some of those stray hairs, as I like to call them. Anything that falls off the main motion correlation is pretty easy to spot here. Then I solve it again and get a pretty good number. Quick tip, if you had to delete some of your ground markers because they got cut off and just weren't contributing enough data, you can always go back and add those later and just set the weight to zero before placing the tracking markers. Not a lot of people know this, but this will allow you to use the marker as a ground bundle without having it affect your solve error. So now let's tell Blender where the ground is. And you can see our scene reorient. Shift S to move the cursor to the world origin and set the cursor as a pivot point. Now check it out. Now when we select our camera, we can rotate it on the Z axis until our ground is appropriately oriented in the scene. Our perspective already matches, we just need to get the orientation correct. Then we can start even blocking out things like buildings or doors or windows or whatever else you might want as reference geometry when you bring it into Unreal. You can even go ahead and build out a full scene if you'd like, but I'm gonna add the assets later. Currently, our camera is animated as a constraint, which is not what we want. We actually are gonna want frame by frame keyframe data, so let's duplicate our camera so we have a copy. And then we can select our export camera, go to the constraints tab and click constraint to F curve. Now it's all keyframe data and that was really easy. And guess what, this part's easier. Select your camera and all the geometry you want to export to Unreal and click File, Export, USD. Make sure on the export settings that you tick Animation and only selected items. For the second half of this video, I'm gonna be using Unreal Engine 5.5. If you're setting up a new project, make sure you go to the Film and Video tab and then click the blank template. This will ensure that you have most of the tools necessary to follow along with the rest of the tutorial, including the Media Bundle Blueprint, which we'll be using later. Now we need to enable the use of USD Stage Editor in Unreal Engine. Go to Edit Plugins, search USD, and make sure the USD importer is enabled as well as USD Core. That should already be there. Then restart your engine. When it restarts, click Window and USD Stage Editor to import your scene. I like to double check that my frames per second matches my original footage, but it's more of a superstition. And now you can see in the inspector, our ground camera and all reference geometry are visible and ready to import. So go ahead and click Actions and then Import on the USD stage and ensure that the level sequences is checked. Don't miss that step. Then select Import. Now we can see in our content drawer that there's a level sequence associated with your camera animation. And in my case, it already selected the proper frame rate. If you shot in a different frame rate than what's shown here for some reason, you can set it to the original frame rate in Unreal Sequencer and then select all your keyframes, right click and hit snap to frame. This is kind of like quantizing notes and ensures that you're not dropping any camera animation data. We need it all. All right, small lesson, here's why this is important. If your camera animation is misaligned with your footage, it might not seem like a big deal to have one missing frame, but imagine that your footage is shaky on the pan axis. One bad misaligned keyframe could cause your entire animation data to be off sync, and it would actually be multiplying the visible micro vibrations between your footage and our tracked camera movement. So make sure that all your frames line up exactly, frame for frame. All right, so before we go into world building, I'm gonna show you how to get that footage that we keyed out earlier into Unreal Engine so we can motivate our scene better when we're building. Because informed decisions are good decisions. Let's make a new folder in our content drawer and name it Media Plates. Now right click anywhere and go to Media and Media Player. Check that box to create a corresponding texture. Give it a name like 
MP underscore anything. Next, right click again and go to media and then image media source. Give it the same name starting with IMS this time for image media source and open it up. Under sequence path, find your folder containing the green screen image sequence we created earlier. Select the first image and click open. I always like to go to advance and set the frame rate override to match our footage. Another superstition, but I like to do it. If we open our media player, we can see that the footage has now loaded successfully. So now we want to create a new material by right clicking on our media texture and selecting material. We can double click to open this and then right click and add our chroma key. Plug your texture sample into the chroma key here, then set the blend mode to translucent and connect the emissive color and opacity channels into our shader outputs. Right click on the material we just created and then create a material instance. This will give us a whole bunch of new controls to refine our chroma key in Unreal. The main ones to look out for here are the alpha control settings and the key color, which is usually green or blue. In order to get this footage overlaid in our camera view, click on all in the content drawer and then search for media bundle and we should see this blueprint pop up. Media bundle player 16 by nine. Now click on our camera in the outline and drag the media bundle blueprint onto the camera component in the details panel. Now, if we open up this blueprint, we can click on the plane and search for our material instance or drag it in from the content drawer. Now, if we move our media bundle blueprint on the X axis in the details panel, we'll start to be able to see our footage and you wanna make sure that it just fits in your camera frame. But what kind of sucks is it's stuck on one frame. So in your sequencer, go ahead and add a media track. Click the plus button and under media source, select our image media source. Then right click that and go to edit section and under advanced, select use external media player and then select the media player we created. And if you did this right, it should be the same name as your image media source. That's how we keep track of these things. Move the clip so it starts at the same time our sequence does. We'll worry about the shadow later, but let's start building our world. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna use a bunch of assets from Cargo by Kitbash 3D. At the time I'm recording this, they still have an updated Cargo to work with Unreal Engine 5.5, so I'm just doing a workaround by importing these models into 5.4 and migrating them over. So we can start moving these objects around in our scene and getting a rough block out. I'm noticing that the scale of my scene is a little whack, so I'm gonna select the root prim in our outliner and scale it until it feels about right. I'm positioning our sun so it better matches the lighting I had on set, so that way I can make more informed decisions while I build out the scene. Now I'm bringing more buildings in to fill the gaps in the horizon and bringing in a material for our floor, which in this case will just be asphalt for now. I like to use this kind of outside in approach when I'm building a digital set. So I'm only adding details in the places that really matter, building them from large to small. So I did an initial export of my scene so I can see how it feels. I was able to recover the shadow from my green screen, which I'll show you how to do shortly. So the key issues that stick out to me here is that the shadow I'm able to pull from the green screen is far less sharp than the one being casted by our directional light. But because I had diffusion on my light in the studio, there was really no way to go back on it. And I should have used a point source because the sun is a point source. But if we change the source angle on our directional light, that'll soften that up a bit. I'm also noticing that the ground detail is going to be really important in this final composite. So with that being said, I'm gonna start adding ground cover. Some of my favorite Megascans assets are decals because they don't take up too much processing power. You used to get these things for free back in the day. Now you gotta pay to play. There's a lot of good ones like potholes, patches, and debris that we can use. I'm also adding in curbs so it doesn't look so sci-fi, placing them randomly so that they look organic and aged. Details like drain caps and accumulated dirt can go a long way to blend your ground in with the environment around it. And you can really see the environment coming to life. It's also not a bad idea to bring in some actual asphalt debris with geometry and scatter that across the ground using a foliage tool so it all doesn't look so painted on. As far as building atmosphere, I'm just using a directional light for the sun, a skylight, an exponential height fog, sky atmosphere, atmospheric fog, and volumetric clouds, pretty standard. And I'm just constantly toying with the settings on those to get them to feel somewhat more realistic and match our footage. I noticed there were some frames that felt a little janky, like the track was kind of messed up. So sometimes a good way to handle that is to honestly just go ahead and delete a few frames from your camera's transform keyframes. I'm also gonna add a foreground object because I need something to motivate like that changing light on my face. I also turned around in the take that I did, so I added a helicopter to motivate the random acting because I did not plan that out ahead of time. So it's time to export our footage and there's a few considerations that you should take beforehand. First, make sure that you hide your media bundle blueprint before your final render. Next, to give us more flexibility with our color depth and compositing, it's a good idea to create an OCIO config to export our footage in ACES. There's a lot of tutorials out there on this, so I won't waste your time. And these are the settings I usually use when I'm exporting through the movie render queue. In this instance, I have a foreground object that I wanna render separately with an alpha channel. If anyone's interested enough, I'll definitely make an additional video breaking down the movie render queue and the graph and how to export foreground elements separately with an alpha channel so you can sandwich your keyed green screen footage in between your backplate and your foreground elements. 
Great, so now that we've rendered out the background and the foreground elements, I'm gonna take these EXR sequences over to DaVinci Resolve for some compositing. You can use pretty much any NLE for editing you want, but I like to use DaVinci Resolve these days. I'm just gonna run my original footage through a Delta Keyer node. I'm just doing typical green screen stuff here, using threshold to really dial in the range of green we wanna key, eroding it to pull back on our fringe, using fringe control to make the fringe look nice, and overall just trying to tune it to remove the spill and try to get the key as clean as possible. Whether you're using Delta Keyer or something like Key Light in After Effects, it's worth getting familiar with these tools because they're pretty standard for most keying workflows. And I'm sure a lot of you have thought before, hey, maybe I can key a shadow and then just never tried it. Yes, you can totally key a shadow. I did it here. The trick, at least in DaVinci Resolve, is to key the area directly around the shadow and then invert that and then make everything dark using a brightness node. You want it completely black. And then later we're gonna drop the opacity, but the secret sauce in DaVinci Resolve is after your Delta keyer, use matte control and then noise reduction in that order. I masked out just the area of interest, basically the bottom of the feet and the shadow itself. And I also gave that a feather with a little bit of a fall off using a mask. Shadows can be tricky to key, but if you really dial in the threshold, you're able to pinpoint that exact range of green. And then with matte control and denoise, you can get a pretty convincing shadow. Lastly, I'm just trying to split the difference between my foreground and my background to try to get the black points to match the best I can. And then to really make it all blend, I'm just gonna add an adjustment layer over everything. You can add film emulation on this layer. You can add some noise or grain. You can give it all a master color. Really anything that's gonna tie all your footage together. Things like aperture diffraction, chromatic aberration, halation, bloom, even a little bit of extra camera shake added can go a really long way to tying your footage into that backlight and really making it feel cohesive. If this video helped you out at all, feel free to subscribe. If not, it's all good. I'm gonna keep pumping out content for you guys so that you can do some cool stuff because I believe in you. Peace.